I have been trying to tell that story throughout my entire career as a reporter, though literally 20 years in Ask a Mexican, in my just my writing at the OC Weekly, even in the LA Times, you know, getting there, working into that, just at the very least introduced to people, Mexicans are not the pathetic, the poor, <laughs> pathetic uh, sob stories that the American media oh. wants to make them out to be. Right. No, we're humans. Let's just start with that radical concept. And exactly. then from there, let's really get into some of the things that Mexicans believe. First of all, you know, different style of Mexicans. And then, you know, the Mexicans that I could talk about the most is like my, my type of Mexicans, where my parents are from, which are these rural Mexicans mm. that, you know, they would have, they would have been Republican if it wasn't for stupid Republicans in California talking all sorts of shit on illegal immigrants in the 1990s. And it's something, especially being in Orange County, which, you know, was the epicenter for a lot of this. I'm like, guys, guys, and it's always guys, you're doing this wrong. Pay attention to what I have to say. And they never did it. And that's why, you know, historically, at least for the past, really the past decade, Republicans have faced as many um, problems as they have in California. And even with this whole phenomenon, now the American media is like, oh my God, how could Latinos possibly vote for Trump? Isn't Trump evil or whatnot? And I'm like, not for all Latinos, number one. Number two, not all Latinos are leftists. In fact, I would argue that most Latinos are not, not. leftists. Yeah. That is the great myth. And that's a myth, though, by the way, that was like was self-propagated in many ways by Republicans. So it's all on them, man. If, if, if they don't want to you know, Reagan knew it better than anyone else. And W, to a lesser extent, w, if you yeah. don't want to listen to them, that's on you folks. Yeah. Wow. Okay. So you could have reformed the Republican Party and made them a majority <laughs> majority party in California, Gustavo. You could have done this on your on your own, right? If they listened to you, right? I mean, that's kind of what you're saying, actually. I, isn't it? I, I, I mean, I, I am now registered as a Democrat because I lost a bet in 2018. And I, <laughs> if I make a bet, I don't know. Well, the, really quickly, the bet before that, I was always declined to state. And I voted all, you know, I literally voted for whoever I thought was a better candidate. So I voted Libertarian. I voted Green. I voted Democrat, some okay. Republican as well, depending on what it was. So in 2018, I go to the Laguna Woods Democrats, Laguna Woods being the senior community down here in Orange County. Mm-hmm. Totally cool people. I mean, I mean, they're actually, the, they're actually, most of those folks are red diaper babies. So their parents were oh. Jewish communists during the 1930s. So gotcha. it's, it's cool to talk to them. Like, if we have really great yeah. conversations. So this was 2018. I said, okay, look, like, I think the Republican Party or the Democrats, you're going to get some congressional seats in Orange County. But you're not, I don't think you'll get as many as you think you will. So I'll tell you what, I'll register as a Democrat if you get a majority of the seats. Well, the Democrats swept all the damn congressional seats in Orange County. And I'm like, ah, fuck. Now I have to register as a Democrat. (laughs) But I made a promise, especially those people. They've always been very kind to me. They've been great sources of stories. So we did this whole party. Hey, Gustavo's a Democrat. Not only is he a Democrat, he's a Laguna Woods Democrat. So so all of that said, though, I'm still and I told them I'm going to be the worst Democrat you'll ever have because I'm going to talk a whole bunch of shit on the party. And I'm sometimes going to say stuff nice or not nice, but. I'm going to give suggestions that Republicans might take and might win for them. So I'm going to be totally detrimental to Democrats. So I'm always going to side with what the truth is. I'm never going to be affiliated with any particular ideology or party. I'm just going to go with the truth. And that's the truth that there's is a strain of conservatism, of libertarianism, more, more like it, especially among Mexicans, that the Republicans cannot the, 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 the Republican Party of this past generation has not been wanting to see, but I think now with Trump having won, you know, won as many votes as, as he had, especially down in South Texas, now they're like, huh, there might be something here. And the Democrats, of course, are like, no, 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 I was actually on a, it wasn't a debate. I mean, it was a conversation on some NPR station and I was talking with, uh, you know, a Latina and we're, you know, we're talking about, Lat- La, you know, the Latino Trump vote and she's like, who cares about them? Who cares? Like the real story is how many Latinos voted for de- for Democrats. I'm like, who cares? Yeah. Famous last words. And, and she was so dismissive of these Latino Trumpers that I'm like, all right, I don't pay attention to what I'm saying. I've, I've made a career out of being a Cassandra or in Spanish, you can make it male. So Cassandro, I've, I've been a Cassandro now for 20 years and no one ever listens to me both on the left and right. And yeah. I get proven right on many things again and again and again. So Good luck with that. Yeah, man. People should listen to you more. Uh, <laughs> certainly the Republicans. So what was that? Yeah, what did Trump get again for la- the Latino vote this time? It was huge. I mean, for him. It, 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 here's the thing. It, it wasn't that huge. He actually, there, there's a guy, Gerardo Ca- uh, well, Caldera. Yeah, Her- 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 it's, I always want to say Gerardo, 
but because I have a cousin named Gerardo, but it's Gerardo. It's like Gerardo. Gerardo Cadava, a professor at Northwestern. He did a book about the history of Latinos and the Republican Party. It's a really, really good book. And yeah. of course, he got hated on by a lot of leftists saying, oh, how dare you write? But, you know, I I'm going to take his stance, which is Trump hit the historical number that Republicans, like the, the, the number that re Republican presidential candidates historically get, which is about a third of the population of Latino voters. So he amazing. just basically did, he, yeah, well, that's the thing. You say amazing, and we'll get to that in a bit. Okay. He just did what he was supposed to do. But what makes it so amazing is, number one, he gained on his 2016 numbers. And number two, yeah. he gained that much, even though he had to go through four years of people saying Trump is the worst thing that has happened to Latinos ever, ever. since, you know, American imperialism policy. This guy is the devil. Yep. This guy is a vampire that's going to destroy our yeah. families. And so the fact that he got so many Latino voters for that, and like, to me, that's what's the historic, that's what's such a, like, that should spell alarms or, you know, that should ring alarms. I always like to mix my metaphors. That should <laughs> ring alarms to Democrats who really just went all in on a social justice campaign, yeah. figured that Latinos were just going to follow through, and they didn't. And so that is freaking them the hell out. Let's say this again. Donald Trump increased his Latino vote since 2016 after what you after being told 24-7 by everybody in this country that he he is to Mexicans as Hitler was to Jews. Pretty yeah. much. And worse, and, and worse. I mean, he was Cortez, <laughs> Hitler, yeah. um, Cortez. Frito Bandito, <laughs> all these horrible things rolled into one. Right. And a lot of Latinos like, I don't care. And all so right. I, so I, yeah, it, it, it's fine. So, and so I did this story of one of my columns for the times. I interviewed, I profiled the guy, Randall Avila. He's the executive director of the, uh, Orange County GOP. So mm -hmm. it was kind of a two-pronged story, but the, you know, you, you said about how I try to go for stories that are national, so thank you for saying that. And for mm -hmm. this one, what I cared about was like, okay, what's going to be harder for you, Randall? Is it going to be harder for you to turn Orange County blue or red again because the Republican Party suffered historic wipeout in 2018? Right. Or is it going to be harder for you to be able to get Latinos to vote Republican and actually uh, he and he did both by the way like so the Republican Party did gain some they gained two congressional seats back in Orange County so kudos to them even though I didn't like the candidates at all but when it came to the Latinos I mean I just told his story his, he is a Chicano so his grandparents were Mexican immigrants uh, his dad his parents grew up in East LA his dad is still a security guard to this day wow. he had never cared at all he had never even registered to vote until 2016 and then he did because he got excited about Trump and for mm -hmm. him, it was all about, hey, I'm a security guard. I'm Second Amendment guy, the Democratic Party. They want to take away my guns. No. Oh. His mom, his mom was, you know, the way Randall described his mom, a little bit more liberal, but devout Catholic. So for her, it's all about abortion. Mm -hmm. And for her, like, I'm going to go for Trump, even though I don't like him, but he's going to defend, you know, he's going to try to, you know, scale back Roe v. Wade far more than uh, the Democrats. Mm -hmm. So he did that. So I, so, and that's where I introduced, uh, you know, it's something that's been, you know, rumbling around in my mind for years, but I'm like, I got to put it out there to force myself to really flesh this out. But this term of rancho libertarianism, yeah, rancho being a village, you know, villages in Mexico, so rural vill villages and libertarianism. So I made this argument that, especially with Mexican Americans, there is always going to be this streak of independence. This, yeah, like get, you know, forget the so the social conservatism because that could. That could happen anywhere, even especially with the elites, whether they want to admit it or not. But in the small town, it's like, leave me alone. I want my guns. I want to say what I want to say. I want to believe what I want to believe. I don't need to be told that my old ways, that machismo is toxic, that I have to uh, defend my cis, my hishet normality, whatever the hell cishet <laughs> is. Yeah. I, you know, leave me alone. Like, let me be. Uh, you know, don't fence me in. So I did the story, and, and it's funny because a lot of people are like, "Whoa, I never thought of it this way." But you have something going on there. And then, of course, you have Democratic pollsters like, hell no, you're in, <laughs> here's Gustavo again, trying to fuck with shit, making just these wild pronouncements. That's not true at all. And <laughs> what ended up happening, of course, Trump, I mean, Trump ended up winning those counties down in South Texas, which are yeah. like 90, these are the most Latino counties in the United States, 95% Latino. And everyone is just surprised. Oh my God, oh my God, how did this could happen? But those of us who know, it's like, dude, the border, like 50% of the border patrol is Latino. 
And now yeah. I don't like the Border Patrol at all, but when you're a poor Texan down in South Texas and the Border Patrol could pay you good money and give you insurance, well, you're gonna, you know, you're gonna lock in with them. And then you have a president like Trump who says like, I love the Border Patrol when everyone else is calling you a sellout, a bandido and trash. Well, of course you're not gonna go for Biden. You're gonna go for Trump. Right.